Hi everyone, Matt Easton here. So movie review number three, um, Rob Roy. So uh, a movie fight that lots of people um, quote when asked uh, for a good example of European historical swordplay is the final fight in Rob Roy. Uh, this is another fight, um, I believe, um, choreographed by William Hobbs, uh, just as the duelists are as well. And um, it's, uh, it's an interesting uh, contest because it's between uh, Tim Roth's character and Liam Neeson's character whereby one is representing a sort of more um, uh, southern, in other words English in this case, but, um, but European I suppose, uh, sort of thrust centric style of fencing against the Highlander um, played by Liam Neeson using a basket hilted broadsword. And this is a topic, you know, the, the rapier versus backsword or small sword versus backsword or broadsword um, or indeed uh, dueling sword versus sabre. This is a contest that is discussed in historical sources um, a fair amount. Um, in the 18th century when this film is set, um, small swords were the uh, default kind of gentleman's dress sword uh, and in fact they were the default dueling sword for uh, people of sort of middle class and, and, and above. Um, the uh, the broadsword was particularly popular in the highlands of Scotland um, and uh, the backsword was popular in England as well and, and lowland uh, Scotland. The backsword and broadsword uh, essentially are the same, same kind of weapon. A backsword is single-edged, a broadsword is double-edged but they're both a basket-hilted cut and thrust sword with the emphasis really on the cut. Uh, the basket hilt makes use of the point a little bit, uh, I won't say difficult, but you can't apply the point in as many uh, ways and as uh, quickly and subtly as you can with a uh, small sword or a rapier, for example. Um, now, one of the criticisms levelled at uh, the, the final fight in Rob Roy uh, by people who um, have initially said that's fantastic, brilliant fencing, etc. Uh, one of the criticisms you sometimes hear is uh, about Tim Roth's sword and the way that he uses it. So the sword itself is a bit strange. You would have expected him in the 18th century to be using a small sword or perhaps a spadroon. What he's actually equipped with is, uh, is a sword of, uh, of um, uncertain um, type. The hilt appears to be somewhat rapierish, somewhat like a Walloon broadsword, and the blade appears to be somewhat like a spadroon. Um, it initially looks like a small sword blade or perhaps a rapier blade, um, but actually it is. it has got some width to it and clearly has some degree of cutting capacity. And actually the way that he uses it uh, in the duel with Rob Roy, uh, with, with Liam Neeson's character, is uh, predominantly actually to cut. Now this is often um, a criticism that's levelled at the fight. I actually don't have a problem with that. Firstly because the blade is of a sort of spadroon type, so it could cut to some degree. And in actual fact, uh, the cuts that you see um, on Rob's body, on Liam Neeson's body, are very superficial cuts. So it doesn't really cleave, they're, they're sort of draw cuts, or push cuts as well. Um, so I don't have an issue with that. And equally, in terms of the story of the fight, um, I think we're supposed to interpret that Tim Roth's character is essentially toying with, uh, with Liam Neeson's character, uh, like a cat with a mouse, <laughs> although the size is the other way around in this case. Um, and so he's giving him lots of wounds to show that he's the superior fencer and saving the thrust really for threatening him uh, and, the, and for the final coup de grace. Um, so, um, so the first point is, is about uh, Tim Roth's sword which I don't really have an issue with. Um, second point, um, Tim Roth um, is shown lunging at the legs quite a lot. Um, and I think this is a bit of an anomaly. Uh, I'm not really sure why they decided to do it. I suspect that, uh, that Tim Roth's thrusts were supposed to come in at a slightly higher height originally, um, but maybe for uh, reasons of, of what the actors could perform most safely or easily or what looked the best on camera, uh, they have him thrusting very, very low at uh, Liam Neeson's legs quite a lot. And Liam Neeson do the, doing these big sweeping circular parries. Maybe they just liked how this motion looked on camera. Um, but in terms of fencing, 
yes, you can thrust at someone's legs, perfectly valid. However, Liam Neeson's reaction is not very logical. He's forever parrying these thrusts at his legs, when in actual fact, what he should do is what we term a slip. That is, moving the, the front leg back and hitting in the same tempo or in the same time Tim Roth's character. So he's continuously chasing the blade, uh, sweeping, always trying to sweep away Tim Roth's point, is kind of a schoolboy error, uh, as we'd say in the UK. It's, it's, it's a beginner mistake. It's not something you would expect an experienced fencer to do. We could excuse this in the context of the story by saying that uh, Liam Neeson's grown up essentially fighting other Highlanders with, uh, with broadswords or perhaps with um, you know, other Highland weapons and he's not very used to fighting someone who uses thrusts a lot and is very point centric or this style of uh, more southern style of fencing. Um, so we could excuse that. Uh, third point, this is a really niggly little point, but if you look uh, at the video I'm going to post below of, um, of the fight, uh, of the final fight from Rob Roy, at 3 minutes 20 you can see that um, Tim Roth uh, actually walks sort of backwards underneath a sword blow that hasn't yet come and holds his sword blade up in the air and Liam Neeson obligingly hits the sword blade. This is a very clear example of a, a, an artefact of choreography that doesn't look like real fighting. He's put the sword there purely for it to be hit because they are going through a learnt sequence that they've learnt for that fight. It's a very long and very impressive sequence. Um, however, it's very clear that that has no real martial purpose. He's just sticking the sword in the air above his head uh, so that um, Rob Roy, so that Liam Neeson can hit it. Um, and uh, the final point, and the question that often comes up, is about um, Liam Neeson's character, Rob Roy's grabbing of, of Tim Roth's blade at the end. Um, so uh, you'll watch the video, um, the fight, hopefully before you watch my video here and hopefully again you'll watch it after. Um, and essentially Tim Roth's got his point at uh, Liam Neeson's sort of uh, above his collarbone maybe towards his heart or into his chest area or neck perhaps. Can't really see exactly where, it's, where the point is. Um, and um, <laughs> Liam Neeson somewhat ungentlemanly and I would argue somewhat against the code of the fight as he's essentially already been beaten um, grabs the blade and then cleaves um, cleaves Tim Roth basically almost in half through the ribs through the collarbone and ribs um, could this be done? Yes absolutely grabbing of blades and cutting down of the opponent is absolutely mainstream throughout European swordplay um, in actual fact, Liam Neeson is shown to have a cut hand. If you grab the blade and it's not uh, moving, if it's a stationary blade and you grab it, so long as you keep um, pressure on that blade, you can pull it around all over the place and it will not cut your hand. You can swing a sword around whilst holding the blade. It's not very comfortable, but you can detain it certainly for long enough and safely enough that you can then cut down your opponent. Um, and this was done a lot in fencing. If the blade is stationary, this actually makes it quite easy. So what, so what Liam Neeson does is very easy. Might not be honourable, might not be in the code of conduct, but it is actually quite an easy technique to do. Um, what I'll finish off by saying is that I have struggled to find any criticisms for this fight in Rob Roy because it is really good. Uh, yes, Tim Roth's sword is a bit weird. Yes, he uses it mostly to cut with, although he does threaten with the point a lot. And, he, and I think, as I've explained, I think there's a reason for that. I think he's essentially toying with Liam Neeson before um, finishing off, him off with the point. Um, yes, there's a couple of moves in there which are pure stage choreography. They're not really very martial. Um, and yes, these, some of the thrusts at the legs seem to come quite low repeatedly and you don't really know why is Liam Neeson continually parrying these low thrusts instead of just slipping them and hitting, um, hitting Tim Roth's character in the head or the sword arm. Um, so yeah, there's a few things in there, but really this is a fantastic example of good stage choreography that looks like a historical fight. It's two different types of sword against each other, two different fencing styles against each other, and there's a story told throughout the fight as well. Okay, um, and it looks like a convincing historical um, sword fight. Okay, thank you very much.